This is NDTV. And you are watching NDTV Prime. a bit of a journey of discovery for us as we came in here today because um, we knew that there was going to be things about this place that we obviously didn't know. It is mythical, mythological, a lot of it rooted in ancient stories. So this is the Mutijulu watering hole where uh, apparently there was a battle between two snakes. One was a python, one was a very poisonous snake. And uh, the story goes that uh, there was an element of payback. So the python committed a crime and the other snakes, the tribe, went to sort of punishment. And the thing was that in the ancient system, if you administered punishment, you also had to revive that person and heal them, which they didn't do. So then the snake's aunt, ridge that you see on top, that's the aunt going to the watering hole. A lot of these stories are uh, also markers in a sense and, and maps uh, that you're supposed to sort of learn about as you go. And, and they have their roots in the mythology, but uh, there's also a very practical side to it. I think on this entire adventure. Everywhere we go, I keep wishing we had a little more time. Here in particular, I think, given the fact that it's not just about coming and looking at the rock, but also trying to absorb some of the local culture, I think it would have been nice to just be able to spend a little more time for all of that. But all that really means is that I'm gonna continue with my usual theme, which is I have to come back. What a fantastic way for me to end the Australian leg of our journey. Now, Uluru is everywhere. It all tells you about the historical, cultural, geographical, even geological significance. But nothing prepares you for looking at the rock in person. Even if you don't believe in the spiritual side of things, you have to imagine that there's a greater purpose for this being here. Maybe it's for aliens to spot the land or I don't know what, but you just can't help falling in love with it. You just have to come back, you have to stop, you have to stare. to see this dramatic sunrise, I always knew it would be nice. I always knew it would be special, but um, it was more than that. It reminded me of uh, the folklore and all the culture that we've been hearing little snippets of since yesterday about why this rock is so important to the Ananu people. The Ananu are the ones who are the keepers of this land. One other thing we learned about here is something called Chukurpa. Now, that's an interesting little word. Well, I think um, the only way I can explain it to you is that it's a life system. It's everything you need to live a good, true, honest, wholesome life. And um, we can relate to that in many ways, can't we? So 
so phenomenal 24 hours in Uluru, isn't it? Awesome. Something. That rock was something else. This is a perfect way to end my trip. I know it's a high note for you. So Sirish, of course, has uh, some family engagements for which he has to head back. And it's too bad because we would have been very happy to have you for the rest of the drive. I'm sure. I'll miss you, Siddharth. <laughs> have a safe trip back. Let's get on with it. <laughs> See you. Take care. So it's too bad that Sirish, of course, had to uh, take off because it would be nice for him to complete the drive with us. And uh, in case you're wondering how I'm going to magically drive both cars, I'm not because uh, Gaurav, who's been, uh, or let's say whose primary task has been to photograph these cars in the spectacular setting we've been at, is also now going to drive the second car. So uh, we'll keep moving and the convoy rolls on. has now traversed 35k. Yes, it's been a huge, huge drive. We're still not done, so we're gonna keep adding to that figure. We have left uh, Ulu behind. We are heading back towards the Stewart Highway, from where uh, we will now turn left and continue north towards Alice Springs. The Alice Springs itself, of course, holds its own uh, story, so something we will hope to discover later today. We're at the Alice Spring Desert Park and the uh, whole idea here is to try and understand the ecology and the balance that's maintained in uh, the desert environment. I was treading cars in your garden waiting for a breeze to blow on by. I've been on the run from this lately sitting even words and wondering why. Oh, it looks as though the sun is coming out once more. So all set. Yeah. We'll uh, get going. Kuba Pedi. It's about seven S half hours away. Yeah. So we'll stick together anyway. First, I think we need to make a fuel stop. That car is like really low on fuel. Alright. Oh, but um, otherwise, of course, anyway, we'll stick together. So that's oh. so I'll find a gas station first. Huh? See you. Yeah. See you. driving nearly 700 kilometers today. This time, of course, we are back on the Stewart Highway going south. And uh, we'll still get to Kuba Pedi well before the sun goes down. It's a nice, uh, good drive, of course. Now we know this road, so I know exactly what to expect in a sense. But yet, uh, you know, I'm going a little bit slower and kind of being a little more cautious and definitely keeping the second car in view because Gaurav is driving. And while he says that he's completely fine and he's not tired and he's comfortable with it now, um, I'm just gonna always kind of keep an eye on him a little bit. So uh, if it was Sirish, I think you know I wouldn't be too worried if there was a bigger gap between the cars. is that a road train is essentially a giant truck with multiple trailers, at least three. And uh, of course, it links up like a train, so which is why it has that name. It's very typical of this part of Australia, especially in the center, but you see them all over the country. And uh, the whole idea, of course, is that they can transport more goods than what just a single regular truck would do. We've seen them right through our journey. Had to show it to you as well.
Hi there. How's it going, mate? Good, how are you? Is this you? Yeah. This is obviously something very different for us. We don't have road trains where we come from. Yeah, no, cool. How long is this, by the uh, way? 53 metres. Ah. So if you, went, if you walk around it, you've walked the football field. Okay. How do you reverse this thing? Do you reverse it? Yeah, we can reverse two trailers, but if you've got three on, you don't have much control. No, it was good. It was looking like you had a good clip going there. and uh, It looked great again. Thanks again. Thanks no for talking to us as well. No and safe driving. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye. 53 meters. Imagine trying to drive something that's 53. I mean, we keep talking about sub four meter cars and sub four meter SUVs. That's what we talk about in our uh, context. Look at this thing, it's huge. Yeah, I don't think I can call the GL the Hulk anymore. I just can't.